Hi, good evening. Buenas noches, teacher. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Bien, gracias a Dios. ¿Y usted? Pues bien, gracias a Dios. Este, ahorita les voy a enviar una información. Yo creo que había quedado en duda con eso. Así que les voy a estar enviando la, la información que me habían pedido, ¿verdad? Eh, me acuerdo que me habían dicho que querían también un listado de los verbos que no van en ING, ¿verdad? Ya yes, dicho. Vaya. Because we are going to be using that information, that's why. Vamos a estar usando esa información, por eso que se la voy a, se la voy a compartir. Ok, let me see. ¿Qué más, qué más era lo que les iba a compartir? Creo que es... Ok. Ok. With that is enough right now. Ok. Ahorita eso lo voy a compartir. Ya en el transcurso de mañana esperaría, ¿verdad? Enviarles lo demás. O si ustedes necesitan más información, igual me avisan, ¿verdad? Así yo les sigo compartiendo. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Ok, so let's begin. Um, ok, I was just checking right now the platform. And I can see that some of you right now have the activities in an 80%. I can see that most of you have it in 100%. Excellent, congratulations. I really like that. So probably we have, let me see how many people. Uh, probably like four people that have not finished yet. But the rest, I can see that you are at 100%. And that is excellent. I really like that. Me encanta ver eso, ¿verdad? Que ya todos, bueno, ya casi un 80% está al 100% con las actividades de la plataforma. Eso sí me, me parece, ¿verdad? Porque como les decía anteriormente, ¿verdad? Ustedes me demuestran el interés que tienen con lo que es el inglés. So I'm going to begin right now. I'm going to check attendance. Voy a empezar con la asistencia. Um, let's see. Hold on. Um, Albanelli Reyes. Ana Delmi Herrera. Carlos Alberto Meléndez. Claudia Guadalupe Arias. Consuelo del Carmen Rivera. Daniel Antonio Luna. Daniel Enrique Orellana. Present teacher. Thank you. Giovanni Alexander Pineda. Present. Thank you. Isabel Beatriz. Juan Carlos Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Osmel Vizcarra. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Yvette Márquez. Miguel Ángel Domínguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Renata Romero. Reinaldo Castro. Zenaida América. Silvia Zuleima. Zuleima Verónica. Present. Thank you. Xiomara del Carmen. Present. Thank you. Daniela Alexandra. 
and Jenny Carolina. Teacher, I'm here. Okay. Linda. Thank you, Linda. Okay, um, I just have a question. Quem me dijo presente? Suleima or Silvia Suleima? Silvia Suleima, present. Ah, okay, sí, es que me quedé así en la duda quién había sido. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's begin. So basically today what we are going to do is a review about the topics that we studied this week. If you remember, we studied about the present continuous tense. We talked about it, not only how to use it in present, but also how to use it in future. And yesterday we were discussing how we are going to use it when we are talking about temporary situations, right? That was the last thing that we were doing yesterday. So we will continue working on that. And at the same time, uh, we are going to explain how to make negative sentences in the present continuous tense, because that's something that probably we didn't see that much. And today I really need you to practice on that, okay? So let's see, questions about the things that we have studied? or about the information that I just shared with you? If not, let me just share that. I'm going to be sharing that information so we can explain it and at the same time can be easier and understandable for you, okay? So give me just a few seconds, please. Okay, so first of all, let me just go there to that information. And I'm going to be sharing screen with you. Okay, the information that I shared is about a book that I have. So I'm going to be sharing that book right now with you. And I think that this is the, the first information that I shared, okay? So we can see here when we are going to use time expression. So for example, if you remember, we talked about a simple present and it says that we often use simple present with always, never, often, sometimes, and usually. These are called adverbs of frequency and normally go before the main verb, okay? So this is one of the first things that we need to know, when, that when we are using frequency adverbs, we are going to use simple present tense, okay? Cuando tenemos los adverbios de frecuencia, nosotros vamos a usar lo que es el presente simple. So you can see here the examples. I always watch TV after school. No me pueden decir, I am always watching TV after school. Or she's often arriving late for college. En este caso, nosotros usamos lo que es el presente simple con los adverbios de frecuencia. Okay? Um, let's see. I'm going to ask for one of you to help me read it. And the first person that I have on my screen is Daniel. So, Daniel, can you help me read in the sentences, please? Uh, sentences. We are here. They don't. They don't often forget their day homework. Continue here, Su please. Okay. Su usually has cereal for breakfast. They sometimes have a match on, on Friday. We never give customers a refund. Okay, thank you. So you can see that when we are using frequency adverbs, we are going to use the simple present. Then this is something that we already talked about, that the verb to be is an exception. 
adverbs of frequency go after the verb to be, okay? So we have this, the examples. I am always at school before eight o'clock in math. It's sometimes quite difficult, okay? So I'll stop sharing screen. Voy a dejar de compartir pantalla. Esa información se las mandé al grupo, ¿verdad? Si no me equivoco. Sí. Okay. Yeah, I just shared that with you so you can have it. Para que la tengan ahí, ¿verdad? Y si tienen alguna duda, pues me, me hacen saber. Okay. Let me see. Another thing that I just shared with you, algo que también compartí con ustedes. Let me just put there. Okay, probably this information I haven't shared with you. Probably esto no se los haya compartido aún, pero ya se los voy a enviar porque ya lo tengo también, ¿verdad? Um, so here we are talking basically about the present continuous. You can see it there. We have how to form it, that we are going to have the affirmative, something that we've been discussing during the week. We are going to have the subject, then the verb be, and a verb in ing. We have here a summary about the spelling rules. And then you can see that we have the uses. Um, the first one, as it says here, we use the present continuous to talk about things happening now, okay? So that is something that we already know. Things that are happening now. We have the example, let me see, Juan Carlos, can you read it please? Yes, teacher. Where's John? He's in room. He's doing his homework. You're speaking too fast for me. Okay, perfect. So you can see that those are the things that are happening now. Probably some of you would say, teacher, you're speaking too fast. Teacher, you're speaking too fast. Or you, you, you speak too fast, okay? Yeah, I, I know that sometimes that's something that I tend to do. Yo sé que eso es algo que a veces suelo hacer, ¿verdad? De hablar rápido se me olvida. But at the same time, I know that it's good for you because you're getting used to. Se, se van acostumbrando, van acostumbrando el oído. Y no están así como que you're speaking too fast for me. Ya me imagino, me pusiera a hablar así con ustedes, lo duermo. Y más la hora. Entonces, no. Ok, good. So, we have things that are happening now. Then we have temporary activities. That's something that we were talking about yesterday. Temporary activities. Silvia, can you read the examples, please? We're learning about dress this week. My brother is staying with friends in London until he finds somewhere to live. To live. Thank you, Silvia. So you can see that there we have the next examples. When we're talking about temporary activities, we're learning about trees this week. Estamos aprendiendo acerca de los árboles esta semana. Or we are learning about present continuous this week. Estamos aprendiendo acerca del presente continuo esta semana. O sea, es una actividad temporal. ¿Por qué? Porque tiene su final que sería ahora, ¿verdad? ¿Ok? Porque ya es la otra semana. Vamos con lo que es la última unidad. Unit 4. Then we have, my brother is staying with friends in London until he finds somewhere to live. Mi hermano se está quedando con unos amigos en Londres hasta que encuentre dónde vivir. Hasta que encuentre dónde vivir. ¿Ok? It's a temporary activity. Es una actividad temporal. O sea, no se va a quedar a vivir con los amigos para siempre. Sino que hasta que él encuentre un lugar donde vivir. ¿Ok? Then we have situations of change. Um, this... Is it something that we are not going to study that deep? No lo vamos a ver así tan profundamente. Porque si ustedes recuerdan, solo hemos visto los, solo hemos visto tres usos. Las cosas que están sucediendo en el momento, 
actividades temporales y la última que son futuros. Pero no está de más mencionar, ¿verdad? So, let me see. Miguel Ángel, can you read the examples, please? Um, Miguel Ángel. Okay, so we're going to have... Are you there, Miguel? Yes, teacher. Okay, so can you read the, the examples, please? The, the whole in the ozone layer is getting bigger. The number of pupils in the school is falling. Okay, thank you. And then we have the last one. That was the first thing we studied during the week, future arrangements. Uh, let me see, Daniel, Daniel Luna. Okay, we are flying to Spain on a school trip next month. Okay. I'm seeing the hair teacher after class. Okay, good. So you can see that here we have future arrangements, something that we talked about during the week. We're flying to Spain on a school trip next month. I remember some of your examples. I'm attending a meeting next week, or you were saying, I'm working tomorrow, tomorrow morning, or I'm working on Sunday, for example. So those were your examples about future. And let me see, I think that those are the only ones that I have here. Okay. So this is another information that I know I share with you. So we have present continuous or present simple. We have, it rains a lot in Scotland. So we have that that is an habitual situation. Okay. Then we have put on an anorak. It's raining. So right now in this moment, it's raining. Then we have scientists do experiments to test their theories. Always true. Okay. Esta es una situación que es verdadera, siempre verdadera. Scientists do experiments to test their the theories. Then we have scientists are doing experiments to see if there is life on Mars. This is something that is currently happening. Okay, es algo que está sucediendo ahorita. Then we have, she speaks French and German. She can speak these languages. Ella puede hablar estos idiomas, tanto el francés como en alemán. Wait a minute. She's speaking to someone on her mobile now, okay? So that is for you to see a difference. So we have an habitual situation, some things that are always true, and here we have an ability, okay? And when we are using the present continuous, you can see that we're describing things that are happening now or that are happening currently, okay? And the last thing, something that we mentioned during this week is that there are certain verbs that we don't use when we are talking in the present continuous. So some of them, you can see that we have our believe, like, hate, prefer, want, depend, then we have love, know, remember, forget, mean, need, and understand, okay? So these are some of the verbs that we are not going to use in the present continuous tense, okay? Estos son algunos de los verbos que nosotros no vamos a utilizar en presente continuo. So you can see we have the examples. She doesn't understand the formula. That is correct. We cannot say she isn't understanding this formula. Then we have, excuse me, what does this mean? Okay, this is correct. We cannot say what is this meaning? Okay, because meaning has a different function in English. Meaning, 
tiene una función diferente. Ustedes pueden preguntar, what is the meaning of? Teacher, what is the meaning of? ¿Cuál es el significado de? ¿Ok? No está funcionando como verbo. Excuse me, what does this mean? Disculpa, ¿qué significa esto? Ok, that's the difference. Um, questions? No. no. Are you sure? Seguro que no hay preguntas. Okay. Okay, so if there are no questions, I'm going to move right now to the negative sentences, okay, in present continuous. I remember that that's something that we probably didn't study that much. Probablemente no lo estudiamos así tan detenidamente, ¿verdad? So I'm going to share it with you. So if you remember, we talked about how to make affirmative sentences in present continuous. We know that we are going to use the subject, verb B, plus verb in ing. Now, when we're talking about negative sentences, we're going to use the subject, the verb B, then not, we can use the verb B in its negative form, plus a verb in ing and a complement. So, for example, you can tell me, or one of you can tell me, let's see. I'm not listening to music, okay? You aren't chatting with your friends. He isn't working tomorrow. She isn't paying her bills. It isn't raining We added study in French and they added watching a movie. Okay, so you can see that these are some examples of negative sentences with the present continuous tense. Let's see, casi no se ve. Okay, so hold on. Pero la imagen. Sí, permítanme. Que es lo malo que casi no se ve. Creo que de blanco la voy a poner. Pero la vamos a poner por acá. O tal vez de negro. Y para que se vea mejor. Okay. So you can see that there we have negative sentences in the present continuous tense. Ahí están lo que son las oraciones negativas en presente continuo. ¿Alguna pregunta o duda? Is everything clear? It's good. Okay. Teacher, una pregunta. Tell me. Eh, siempre predomina el, el ING, ¿verdad? Sí. 
porque aquí siempre estamos hablando de presente continuo, ¿ok? Y como okay. es el presente continuo, siempre voy a usar lo que es el verbo to be y el verbo in ing. Ok, gracias, teacher. You're welcome. Another question. No. Okay. So let's continue. Another thing that we talked about during the week was about information questions. And we didn't mention that much about yes, no questions. With yes, no question, what we do is that basically from, um, from an affirmative sentence, we can change it into a question form. So how can we do that? Um, easy. The way how we are going to be making, in this case, yes, no questions, is the following. So if you remember the examples, let me just paste them here. So let's suppose that they are in the their affirmative form. So I'm listening. You are. He is. She is. It is. We are. And they are. So there we have affirmative sentences. In order to make a question, a yes, no question, the only thing that we are going to do is to change the position of the verb be, of the verb be, and the subject, okay? So, for example, if I have here, they are watching a movie, here, the verb be is going to be in the first place, and then the subject is going to be in the second place. So if I continue working on that one, my question is going to be, are they watching a movie? So if you see, the only thing that we are doing here is to change the position of the verb be and the subject, okay? And then the rest, you can see, remains the same. Lo demás, Queda igual. Lo único que yo hago, ¿verdad? Es cambiar la posición del verbo to be con el sujeto. So, let's see now. If I want to make the first sentence into a yes, no question, how would it be? La primera oración. I, okay, excellent. Am I? Listening to music. Perfect. The second one. Are you chatting with your friends? Okay, perfect. Let's see the next one. Is he working tomorrow? Okay, then. Is she paying? Her bills. Good. The next one would be. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Is it raining? Okay, perfect. What about the next one? Are they watching a movie? Huh? Are they watching a movie or are we? Are we? Are uh -huh. Are we studying French? French? Easy, right? So that's the way how we are going to be making yes, no questions in English. Okay? Is this clear or do you have any doubts or comments? It's clear. Yes. 
So, let me stop sharing screen. Va, voy a dejar de compartir pantalla entonces. Vamos a ver qué tan cierto es, qué tan claro está. Um, just to check. What we are going to do is the following, okay? The first person that I have here on my screen is Silvia. Then I have Juan Carlos. And then I have Juan Osme. So we are going to do like this. Silvia is going to tell us a sentence. It doesn't matter the subject, okay? It doesn't matter the subject. She's going to tell us an affirmative sentence. Then Juan Carlos is going to tell us the same sentence, but in its negative form. Then Juan is going to tell us the same sentence that Silvia may, but into its interrogative form, ¿ok? Silvia va a decirnos una oración afirmativa, no importa el sujeto, ¿verdad? Juan Carlos nos va a decir la misma oración de Silvia, pero de manera negativa. Y Juan nos va a decir la misma de Silvia, pero en forma interrogativa, ¿ok? Y así sucesivamente. Yo voy a ir mencionando quiénes van a ir participando porque todos me van a participar, pero les voy a ir mencionando por el orden, ¿ok? So, right now we're going to begin with Silvia, Juan Carlos, and Juan, ¿ok? Ok, teacher. Ok, so, Silvia, it's your turn. Ok, Melissa is attending the cell phone. Ok. Juan Carlos, it's your turn. Melissa isn't attending. Um, resto, si no me acuerdo. Que, repeat, Silvia. Please. Melissa is attending the cell phone. Ah, okay. Melissa isn't attending the cell phone. Okay, good. Juan, now it's your turn. Is Melissa attending the cell phone? Excellent. Now we have Daniel Antonio, Xiomara, and Linda. Okay? So Daniel is going to tell us the affirmative sentence, Xiomara, the negative sentence, and Linda, the question. Okay? I am studying English. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I can't remember much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> he's no is no he's no he's no he's no study English. Okay, thank you, Xiomara. Linda. <laughs> is he studying English? Okay, thank you. Excellent. So let's continue. Now I'm going to have Carlos. Then we have Suleima and Giovanni. I play in the piano. Okay. Yo ya tengo que ser negativa. Yes, that is correct. Uh, I not playing in the plan, piano. Playing the piano, okay? I'm not playing in the plan, piano. Playing the piano. Es que es piano, ¿verdad? Piano, yes. Ah, sorry, escucha otra cosa. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, Giovanni. Y sería siempre en primera persona o en tercera? Uh, ah. No, remember that since we are saying I am, and okay. you want to make the question. Okay. Uh, am I playing the piano? Okay, good. Thank you. Let, let's see. Now we're going to have Norma, uh, Miguel Angel, and Daniel Enrique. He is playing soccer now. Okay, perfect. Is he playing soccer man? 
I'm sorry, Miguel. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Is he playing? Is she playing in the soccer man? Mm, no, she didn't say uh, soccer man. She said soccer. Re repeat re repeat uh, la pregunta. Okay, Miguel. She is. Uh -huh. Sorry, Norma. Miguel, you are going to make the negative sentence. Usted no va a hacer la oración uh, negativa. Okay, Norma, can you say it one more time, please? He is playing soccer now. He is in no soccer man. He isn't. No playing soccer man. Now. Now. Okay. Now. Thank you, Miguel. He isn't playing soccer now. Okay. Puede, and... escribir, puede escribir la teacher, please. Yes. Don't worry about it. She said he playing. I'll send it to the chat here in Zoom, okay? Así la noto. Ah, gracias. Okay. You're welcome. Daniel, now it's your turn. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, can you repeat it, please? Okay, si es que escuché que alguien estaba vivo, como que estaban soplándole. Yeah, remember that the only thing that we are going to do is change the verb be and the subject. Then the rest will be the same. Solo cambio el verbo to be y el sujeto. Lo demás queda tal cual. Solo que al final le agrego el sin. Okay. Is he playing soccer now? Excellent. Is he playing soccer now? Good. And the last three people, I'm going to have Renata, Zenaida, and Anna. Besides them, and uh, yeah, only they are missing, right? So, ustedes tres me hacen falta o me hace falta alguien más? No, okay. <laughs> Lo que sea. An affirmative sentence, yes. I am. Watch TV. Uh, I am negative. Yes, that is correct, she, Anaida. She doesn't watch TV. Mm, okay, remember that is present continue. She said, I am watching TV. So the negative sentence is uh, she isn't watching TV. Okay, Zenaida, excellent. And Anna, you're going to make the question. Is Quest TV? Uh -huh. Is Quest TV? No. Remember, remember that we are changing the subject and the verb be. Cambiamos el sujeto y el verbo to be. Primero el verbo to be, luego el sujeto, y lo demás queda tal cual. Mm. Is to be. Ajá. Uh -huh. Esto sería is. Is. Y el verbo is to be. No, is, to be. is. Is. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? Y. Was TV? Is she? Me quedaría. Is she? Is she? Was TV? Watching TV? 
watching TV. TV. Okay. Thank you. She watching TV. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Okay. So I'm sharing screen one more time. So you can see it here. We said that from affirmative sentences, what we are doing is basically switching the subject and the verb be. Lo que estamos haciendo es cambiar el verbo to be con el sujeto, ¿verdad? Dijimos, el verbo to be pasa al primer lugar y el sujeto pasa en segundo lugar. Lo demás se mantiene tal cual está, con la diferencia que agrego un signo de interrogación. So, for example, uh, if you can tell me, or I can tell you that my son is watching videos, okay? That's something that he is doing right now. Um, he is listening to music. He isn't sleeping, okay? So I have there those examples. Y como vimos, ¿verdad? Lo que voy a hacer yo para formar las preguntas es que cambio lo que es el sujeto con el verbo to be. La primera oración, ¿cómo me quedaría entonces en forma interrogativa? En pregunta. Sí, en forma de pregunta, ¿cómo me quedaría? Is my son, is my son watching, watching videos? Ok, is okay. my son watching videos? Ok, so you can see here. Is, is, is he, he listening? listening to music? Ok. Vaya, si ustedes se dan cuenta, ahí tengo lo que es el sujeto y luego tengo lo que es acá no, no me gusta cómo quedó tengo acá verdad lo que es el verbo to be ok y como mencionamos anteriormente lo que yo hago verdad es que el verbo to be pasa a primer lugar y el sujeto a segundo lugar ok so we have it here tengo acá verdad my son And then I have, esta acá, ¿verdad? Y luego tengo lo que es el verbo to be. Que han cambiado de posición, ¿verdad? Ya no es... Uy, no, no se ve muy de ese color, veamos. Teacher. Ajá. Cuando uno dice my son, se puede sustituir is my baby watching videos. Yeah, you can, you can be more specific. Usted puede ser más específico. Si es un bebé, si yo puedo decir, is my baby watching videos? Porque ahí lo único que les he dicho que es mi hijo. No les he dicho si es un bebé o si es un adolescente, uh -huh. etc. Ok, pero sí, yo puedo pero decir. Pero si se, si se puede. Yes, you can. Ok, ahí el sujeto okay. es opcional. Ok. Good. Ok, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, yes. Y cuando lo hacemos negativo, este, va primero el sujeto y después la negación. Es que dime. ¿Cómo el sujeto no. y después la negación? O sea, <risa> eh, eh, digamos, esa, esa oración que, que estamos viendo, ¿la quiere hacer negativo? Ajá. O sea, diría, my son. Ajá. Thank you, Carlos. Sí, ahí prácticamente me quedaría. Te lo voy a escribir acá. My son isn't, uh, isn't. watching uh, videos. Yeah. Ok. Mm -hmm. My son isn't watching videos. Si yo la siguiente, la segunda oración la quiero hacer de manera negativa, me quedaría he mm -hmm. isn't. Mm -hmm. He isn't listening to music, ok, 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 si sí, el orden es el mismo, 
de una oración afirmativa a una negativa, el orden es el mismo. La única diferencia que tengo es que acá ya no es el verbo to be en su forma afirmativa, sino que negativa. ¿Ok? Negativa. Yes, and if you remember, we have, uh, for example, we have am, um, is, and are. Esas son las formas afirmativas del verbo to be. Ahora, la forma negativa, I'm not, sorry, is not, and are not. Pero, esa es la forma completa. Yo también tengo lo que es la forma corta o contractada, que es la más comúnmente utilizada. Ok, esa es la que más se utiliza a la hora de hablar. Es decir, el I'm not, pasa a ser, Porque va contractado con el pronombre. Then we have isn't and aren't. ¿Ok? De cualquiera de estas formas ustedes lo pueden hacer. Sin embargo, a la hora de hablar es más común usar la forma corta o contractada. ¿Ok? Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Ok, so with the things that we have studied so far, is everything clear? Con lo que hemos visto hasta ahorita, ¿está todo claro? ¿Tienen preguntas? Eh, una consulta, teacher. Tell me. En el caso de las contracciones, a la hora de, de hablar, ¿qué es más común usar la contracción entre el sujeto y el to be o el to be con el not? Uh, vaya, por ejemplo, si yo estoy hablando de manera negativa o de forma afirmativa, sorry. Am es lo más común. La mayoría le va a decir am, no I am. Aquí yo he escuchado que ustedes me dicen I am. Pero la forma que tengo es la primera, am. Y siempre um, me lo leen, I am. Ok. Luego tengo, you are. O, oh, your. Um, he is. O, oh, his. De igual manera. Es más común utilizar lo que es la forma corta. Am, um, your, his. She's, it's, we're, they're, etc. And with the negative form, uh, it is commonly used the contracted form. Es más comúnmente usada, ¿verdad? La forma corta o contractada. De igual manera, esto es a la forma en la hora de hablar, ¿ok? Okay. Let's see, another question. Y el escribir, ¿se puede usar la forma contractada? Sí se puede. Y aquí viene la diferencia, ¿verdad? Si yo estoy escribiendo, digamos, estoy mensajeando, estoy chateando, voy a enviarme un correo, a una carta, a un familiar, a un conocido, yo puedo usar la forma corta, la forma contractada. Ahí no hay ningún problema. Es como cuando nosotros estamos hablando, estamos mensajeando, ¿y qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Mira, ¿y qué vas a hacer? Bla, bla, bla. ¿Ok? Pero... Cuando ya son cosas formales, digamos, un reporte financiero, uh, un correo importante al jefe, yo no puedo usar la forma corta. Ahí tengo que usar lo que es la forma completa, ¿ok? Ensayos, asuntos académicos o importantes, legales, tiene que ir la forma completa, ¿ok? Ok. Okay. Another question? Okay, teacher. Alguna pregunta? No? No. Okay, good. So, we are going to continue, but what we are going to do is a reading, okay? There is a reading on page 34 that we are going to work right now as a group, okay? And then we are going to discuss it 
if they are true or false, okay? In case that we have false sentences, you are going to correct them, okay? So I'll share screen right now with you so we can read this information. We have it here. So we have read this article about activities to keep employees happy. Discuss if the sentences below are true or false and correct the false ones, ¿ok? Vamos a leer este artículo acerca de las actividades para mantener a los empleados felices. Luego vamos a discutir si las oraciones o enunciados que tenemos son falsos o verdaderos. Los que sean falsos, ustedes lo van a ir corrigiendo, ¿ok? So we can see that we have number one that is organized yoga classes. And for this one, I'm going to have, let me see, um, Suleima, you are the first one that appears on my screen. Yes, yes Suleima Mega. Uh, okay. If you you work in the office in the new employees, I are stink at computer every day, not um pronunciation underestimate underestimate the impact yoga call have on their attitude and outlook yoga can help um, uh, uh, pronunciation algebiet Alleviate stress. Come. Alleviate. Alleviate stress. Calm the means. Relation tension. Release. 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 Tension. Improve it. Blood fusion. And deep mom. Mood. What mood? What boss pass boss and um, wouldn't pass wouldn't does and those outcomes man those outcomes those outcomes okay, okay. thank you. Uh, let's see, Suleyma, can you choose another person, please? Se... Que lea la segunda parte, me dice. No, choose another person. Escoja otra persona. Uh, um, Juan Carlos. Okay, Juan Carlos. Celebrate birthdays. You don't use how to really Re um, be rely rely on business gains to boot morally simply 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 as no let's acknowledging. Gym. Acknowledging special occasion can have a big impact. Is now your shows. thing. It shows. it shows your thing that you care about mm -hmm. them as people, not just as employees. Get everyone to think a card. Sign. How cake signs a card? How cake once a month, or simply buy them around? Of coffees each time, someone, someone in your team, someone in your team birthday has a birthday. Okay. Has a birthday. Thank you, Juan Carlos. 
Juan Carlos, can you choose another person, please? Okay, teacher. Oh, let's have Carlos Alberto. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Paimol, give your employees an opportunity to let up some steam by organizing, organizing. a day of Paimol. By organizing a day of Paimol. Simply get, getting, getting out of the office can work wonders for the staff model. What tell though as the boss? You're going to be a prime target. Okay, thank you. And Carlos, choose the last person, please. And Xiomara. Okay, Xiomara. With, with who? Yes. With who? Yes, who? Uh, uh, every, every, everyone, John, every John, everyone, everyone, uh, ask everyone to bring a chill childhood, 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 um, both of them still. Themselves and put them all up on a board and the uh, jet everyone, everyone to um, put their best yes forward on. Each one. Each one. It a bit. Each one. It's it's an a bit of easy, like like hard, 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 fun, fun, fun. That will fun. That will definitely. Definitely have leave a spring. We will while while offering plenty of humor along the way. Okay, good. Thank you. So you can see that there we have. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not that complicated, but well, once we have read this short article, what we need to do is to answer these statements if they are true or false, okay? So we have yoga has an important effect on employees. Is it true or is it false? In case that it is false, remember what, that what you're going to do is to correct that statement, okay? Um, we are going to go to breakout rooms, okay? And we are going to be discussing those statements that we have. Okay, but before going to break up rooms, tell me, is there any question that you may have? Lo que he logrado comprender, teacher, es que de la lectura que acabamos de hacer, vamos a contestar con la pregunta. No. Correcto, sí, de esa lectura, nosotros vamos a ver, de ese, de ese artículo, vamos a ver si los enunciados que tenemos son falsos o verdaderos. Si en dado caso, okay. tengo uno que es falso, yo lo tengo que corregir, ¿ok? A modo que sea verdadero. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. 
Alguien más estaba hablando, no sé quién. No. Teacher. Ajá. What is the meaning? What is the meaning in the second paragraph? Ab no less no le no sé cómo se pronuncia esto. Okay. Acknowledging. Uh -huh. Ese. Ah, okay. Um, acknowledging. It's a simply acknowledging special occasions. Reconocer. So it's a, simplemente reconocer ocasiones especiales pueden tener un gran impacto. Ok, gracias. You're welcome. Another question? No. Ok, so let me see. We're going to go to break up rooms, but... Before that, I'm going to check attendance again. Voy a pasar lista por segunda vez antes de irnos a los breakup rooms. So let me see. I'm going back. Um, Alba Nelly Reyes. Ana Delmi Herrera. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Alberto Meléndez. Present teacher. Okay. Claudia Guadalupe. Consuelo del Carmen. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present, present teacher. Thank you. Daniel Enrique Orellana. Present. Thank you. Giovanni Alexander. Present. Thank you. Isabel Beatriz. Juan Carlos Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Osmel Vizcarra. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Ivette Márquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Miguel Ángel Domínguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Renata Romero. Present teacher. Thank you. Reinaldo Castro. <coughs> Senaida América. Silvia Zuleima. Present teacher. Thank you, Zenaida. Present teacher. Thank you, Silvia. Zuleima Verónica. Present teacher. Thank you. Xiomara del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you. Daniel Alexandra. And Jenny Carolina. Okay, so I'm going to create right now the breakout rooms. And I'll be there checking what you're doing, okay? So let's begin now. Hi, Anna. Está en silencio. It's an important effect on the place. Mm -hmm. This is true. True. Yes. Sí, sí, porque nos le, le escuchamos ahí que decía que, eh, que impacta en los empleados como aliviando el estrés, uh -huh. llamando, ¿verdad? Ok. La segunda, 
You listen to the understatement, the impact yoga call, have a tail attitude and outlook. It, mm -hmm. The second yoga role is tension, but it doesn't count the mind. Eh, ese es falso. Para mí es true. Es falso la segunda porque en la parte ah, dice okay. the yoga can help a little stress, mm -hmm. calm the mind, release tension. Te relaja la tensión, dice, pero después dice que libera la tensión, prueba la bueno, función es lo mismo. Entonces, yo bueno, la... entonces hay que corregirla y sería entonces para mí yoga release tension and calm the mind. Es correcta y es falsa. True o false. Las dos. Para usted es falsa la primera también. Para mí es, 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 es que allá hay dos interrogantes. O sea, relaja la atención si lo dice. Pero ya después dice de que no... Okay, pero la, firma, la afirmación que dice no, no me lo dice. Call the mind, dice. Pero es que la primera habla acerca de la importancia. Del, de ese beneficio para los empleados. Ajá, la primera es su, la segunda es falso, de respuesta. Solo hay que corregir. Ajá. Es ambas, entonces. No, solo falso. Bueno, quizás le estoy interpretando mal. O sea, si bien es cierto, dice que el yoga libera la atención, pero no calma la mente y eso no lo dice en el en el párrafo por eso la respuesta es falsa porque impro, impro idea. Uh -huh. ahí tendríamos que corregir así yoga release tension and calm the mind ah ok calm, calm the mind Okay. Quería para traducir. No, nos quedaría esa verdad, compañeros. Special occasions are important. Mm. Mm. Special are important. Entonces, es... Es falsa y la Ahí modificamos, no... entonces. Ajá, ajá, hay que modificarla, pues. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Solo le quito el not. Exacto. Quiero ver la cuarta... Workers can play paintball inside the office. It's false. Porque no pueden jugar dentro de la oficina, sino que dice que se tienen que organizar un día para salir a jugar. Uh -huh. Ahí solo le cambiaríamos el inside por el outside. Por out. Teacher. Teacher, está en línea. Hola. Hola, una, una, una pregunta, teacher, por ejemplo, en esta, mire. Ajá. Workers can play baseball inside the office para hacerla, porque ahí dice que los jugadores pueden jugar dentro de la oficina, ¿verdad? Yes. Para ponerle que, que, que ver, workers can play paintball out the office, quedaría Outside. fuera de la oficina. Outside. Para leer. Uh -huh. En este caso sería outside, entonces. Outside, sí. Outside the office. Perfecto. Sí, ahí antes nos atrapamos. Y 
quiero ver, la última compañero, Childhood Photos que nos fue de employees. Si las fotografías de la infancia pueden ofender a los empleados. No, ¿verdad? Sí. Según eso parecen divertidas. Sí. Sería falso. Sería falso. Solo le cambiaríamos el can por el can. Ok. Acabar. Sí, can. Ajá. Uh -huh. Bueno, con eso, con eso creo que terminamos ya. Ok, good. Vale, lo dejo entonces, iré a ver a los demás. Y ya terminaron también. You're welcome. Por ejemplo, en la, oh, en la pizarra, algo así. Ajá. Ajá. Y ponerte ellos lo que ellos creen. Poner lo mejor, lo mejor. De mirar hacia adelante cada uno. Esto dice. Aquí es lo que ayudan al, al espíritu. Ajá, como un, levantar el humor. fácil. Algo. Ajá. Puede ayudar Entonces, definitivamente a levantar el espíritu mientras mejor al la humor, ¿no? el humor Ajá. entonces este sería falso ¿verdad? sí porque no la ofende sino por el contrario le ayuda a levantar el humor entonces si lo contesto ayuda a help lift spirit verdad uh -huh. Uh -huh. entonces le quitamos ofend uh -huh. pues... definitely Well, live, live. Spirit. Spirit. Uh -huh. Una frase. Sí, yo solo se iba a hacer de la página 34 la 1, ¿verdad? Yes. Solo vamos y vamos a poner si era falso o verdadero de los de los cinco enunciados. And uh -huh. if we have a false one, you were going to correct it. Mm. Si había alguna que era falsa, la tienen que corregir, ¿verdad? Hay que corregirla. Yes, that's what it says the instruction. Ah, oh, por eso es que oh. todas están falsas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y nosotros bien felices. Ya habían terminado. Ajá. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's what the instruction says. Es lo que dice la indicación, ¿verdad? Ah. Ok, bueno. so I'll give you time. Le doy tiempo para que termine. Yes. Yes. Sí, teacher, please. Ok. En la número uno, la última... La última palabra dice outcomes. ¿Qué, qué significará? Outcome. Buscar algo afuera, creo. Por ahí. Que viene. <ríe> no sé. Operating. O, 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 o cuál. No, la última palabra que está en, en el párrafo 1 dice outcomes. Mm. What boss wouldn't want those outcomes? ¿Qué significa outcomes? Resultados. Aquí hay varias palabras que no conocemos. So there's a lot of new vocabulary for you. Yes. <laughs> ah, that's good. ¿Qué jefe no le gustaría buscar resultados? Por ahí más o menos. And what it means outlook, outlook, outlook. Es como un No, ahí no, estoy perdido. ¿Cuál es esa? ¿A dónde está este? 
Linda. Mándeme. ¿Dónde está esa palabra que dice usted? Ah, dice Outlook. Outlook. En la número uno siempre, como en la cuarta, cuarto renglón, dice Outlook. Outlook. No sé. Ah, oh, yo, en, oh, yo creo que en el correo. En el correo no, sale no, esa no. palabra. Yeah, but, no, uh, pero no sé. Esa no, es otra, es otra palabra, es otro significado. Panorama. ¿Eh? Panorama. Ah, panorama. Ah, panorama. Aquí, aquí me está en el traductor. Bueno. Okay. Vaya teacher, ah, perspectiva, dice la teacher, ¿va? Ah, perspectiva. Y porque Creo me salió que... panorama, teacher. Es similar, ¿verdad? Perspectiva. Sí, sí para... le van a salir. Ah, de... es similar. Ok. Teacher. Tell me. Ok, en la número dos no salía que era falsa. Se decía yoga really extension, but it doesn't come to mind. La forma en que nosotros la convertimos en, en verdadera solo quedó yoga really extension and come to mind. Ok. O sea, solo, solo eliminamos that it doesn't. Eliminamos esa frase y agregamos en. En, uh -huh. correcto. Solamente recuerde que ahí como estoy hablando de yoga, es decir, estoy en tercera persona, el verbo calm llevaría ese. Calm. Calm. Okay. Calm. Calm the mind. Calm. Yes. Calm. Ok. Oh. Ok, and did you finish? El de calma. En eh, teoría sí. <ríe> Pero ya con ese cambio que hemos visto ya. Ya vamos a revisar los demás. <ríe> bueno, ya vamos a ver entonces. Vamos a ir a, a la sesión principal. So, let's go entonces. ¿Qué okay. entonces? No se escucha, dicho. No lo escuchamos, teacher. No, no la escuchamos. Apaga la celular y no la escuchamos. No, tampoco. No se escucha, teacher. Continuamos la clase en el chat. <ríe> Sigamos escribiendo. <ríe> Pero ya sí no se escucha. <ríe> que me cuesta hablar ahora a escribir en el chat. A ver, a ver, me escuchan, me oyen. En Talía se escuchó, don Daniel. Ya lo fregaron. Espere, espere, me voy a parar, me voy a poner de pie. Ah, vaya. <risa> Thank you. 
Y si le reinicia, que a mí a veces eso me funciona, como soy impaciente. Mm, es probable que porque ella sí nos escucha. ¿eh? Se hace una o prueba de, de, del micrófono. O sea, que le pusieron, le metieron tijera al, 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 al audífono speaker. Revísenlo. No se preocupe, salga, si aquí la vamos a esperar, no nos vamos a ir. <ríe> porque, porque su internet está bien, tiene ahí, abre, no, no. Ok, aquí estaremos, no nos iremos. No se muevan de donde estamos.